Hi, welcome to Home Tech Adventure. I hope you're here to make UEFI bootable USB Windows 10 Rufus method. Oh, I think everybody just started stuffing all the terms they wanted into the search bar and Google eventually recognized it as a common search term and then just started suggesting it for everybody. So I used it as a title. But what we're talking about is making a USB stick, something like this one right here. And we're going to install the Windows 10 installer on it and we're going to install it for UEFI systems. Now you can do UEFI and legacy on the same USB. I'm going to do UEFI only and I'm going to do 64-bit only for modern computers because if you're building a modern computer, you're buying it now, really you want to install UEFI and on a 64-bit system. Uh, so we're going to do it that way. Along the way, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and hopefully that will allow you to be successful because sometimes people aren't successful on this and some of those tips and tricks I have not seen on the web. So stay tuned for that. The first thing we need to do is to download the Windows ISO. Now I have a link in the description and I'm going to paste that link in right now and then hit enter and you will see it'll go to the US Microsoft download site it will probably go to the site for your specific region or country and it'll probably go in the language that's common in your area. If it doesn't, all you need to do is go down to the bottom here. On my case, it says English United States, but in your case, it might say something different. But you click that and it will let you choose whatever you want, depending on what type of install you want to do or where you are. So make sure you get the correct download page for your region or your country and then just click this Windows 10. Now, if you are on another system, a Mac system or a Linux system, or even an old version of Windows or a Windows 10 version that is not, uh, does not have a product registration key um, or a pirated version of Windows, you might not see the page that I'm seeing it like here. You might only be allowed, allowed to download the Windows ISO. So if you do, just download the Windows ISO. I'll show you how to, to finish it because we want the ISO. But in this case, I can only download the Windows 10 installation media creation tool. Okay, so that, in my case, that's all I can do. But we'll download the ISO from that. So let's download the tool. Let me click this and we're going to save the file and that will download. Now I have a pretty fast internet connection. It completed it right away. Let's go to our downloads folder and take a look and you can see there's the media creation tool. I'm going to double click that media creation tool and I'm clicking yes. You didn't see that but because it blanks out the screen but I clicked yes and this will take a couple of minutes to no chew on things and do what it needs to do. So let's wait for that. All right, now that it's back, um, let's choose accept and we'll wait again. All right, now on this screen, we don't want to upgrade this PC. This PC has the latest version of Windows on it anyways. What we're going to do is create installation media and we're going to click next. And here you can choose the specifics of the Windows version that you need. Now it's all grayed out because this option is checked. If I uncheck this, I can choose any language that I want. Uh, I only can choose Windows 10 and I can choose 64-bit, 32-bit or both. Like I said, for modern computers, if you're building a new computer or even anything within the last 10 years probably can run 64-bit operating system. So just choose 64-bit. In my case, I can just use the recommended things and click Next. Now we can just directly burn a USB flash drive and I have done that. It does work fine but it installs uh, pretty much everything on there, legacy and uh, UEFI boot, and it takes forever to do it. So I'm going to download the ISO file. We're going to use Rufus because that's what you're here to see, right? So this is how you download the ISO file from the Windows 10 media creation tool if you didn't download it on that first scene that I showed you back there. So let's click next. It'll download the ISO file. And this will take a while. If you have a, um, we'll, we'll click save here. If you have a slow internet connection, this can take a long time. This is a big file. So we'll let this progress bar run. I'll be back when it's back to 100%. Now that the ISO has been downloaded, let's just click finish and it cleans up and you can see in our downloads folder we have the ISO. 
Now let's get Rufus downloaded and install uh, or work with Rufus. So let me go here again and I have Rufus website up. Please download only from the official website. Oh, that goes for Windows too. Don't download pirated copies of these things. Uh, the Rufus website is rufus.ie. I have a link in the description. And we want to download the latest version. So if you take a look down here where it says download, uh, Rufus 3.11. So let's click that. Uh, you can download the portable version if you want. There's not much difference. You can read about that. But I want just the regular one. So I'm just going to download Rufus and just click Save File. And because I have a very fast internet connection and Rufus is actually teeny tiny, uh, it downloaded almost instantly. So we have Rufus.exe. Now you can run Rufus.exe from here. Um, I like to put it in the Programs folder. So let's get a new folder up here and uh, go to the computer. Um, uh, let's see. That's uh, not on there. Uh, so I have to get my uh, view and I got to show the navigation pane. And then I can go to this PC and go to the local disk and program files. And then it let me, lets me put it in there. So let's uh, cut this, control X, and that'll get rid of it there. And go con on the program files, let's go control V. And uh, yeah, I already had it in there. So um, replace it and you need to provide permission. And of course, I give it permission to put that in that folder. So it puts it in there and that's the latest Rufus. Now, you can just double click it. It's not an installer, it's an actual program. If you want, you can right click and choose send to desktop and create a shortcut so that you got a shortcut on your desktop and you don't forget about it. You can do that or you can you know, make a shortcut and uh, put it someplace else. But anyway, um, we'll run Rufus right from here. So let me close the downloads folder so we get uh, less mess. Uh, let's open the Rufus and click yes. Okay, now there's Rufus, but uh, we need a device. We need a USB drive to do this. So let me uh, hide Rufus for a minute, just minimize it there, and we'll minimize these program things. So I have my USB drive, and my USB drive is a minimal USB drive uh, or a 32 gigabyte USB drive. You need at a minimum eight gigabytes for your drive. So make sure you have a big enough drive. It has to be at least eight gigabytes. I really highly recommend using the uh, USB 3 type drives. Honestly, if you get a USB 2 drive, it'll take more than 10 times as long generally. It'll be there for, you'll be there forever. So you, you use a USB drive. But we wanna clean this USB drive. Now that it's in the computer, let's clean it. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the command prompt and you can just usually type CMD and it comes up with the command prompt. And we're going to run as administrator just to make sure. Click yes. And that was in the background. I know you didn't see that, but you got to click yes. And then we want to go into disk part. So type disk part. Oh, I spelled it wrong, didn't I? Disk part. <laughs> Okay, so there's disk part, and then type list disk because we want to make sure that we have the right disk. It's very important because when you clean the disk, it gets rid of everything. And if you do that on your startup, it's not going to work very well. You, okay, so disk one is what we want. It's a 29 gigabyte. Like I said, it's a 32 gigabyte, but with format, it's 29 gigabyte. And it is actually a GPT disk. It might not be a GPT disk on yours. Um, and that doesn't matter. Honestly, when we clean it, 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 it won't matter. So first, we have to select it. Select disk 1, just as you see it there. Hit Enter. List disk again to make sure you have the right one selected. Because when we clean, like I said, it's going to get rid of everything. So let's type clean. And there we go. It succeeded in cleaning the disk. We can even do list disk again and it, it shows it there. Now we could change it to MBR format to make the point that it doesn't matter what format it's in for this process, uh, but I'm not gonna do that. We're just gonna get out of here. So exit and exit. Yeah, I could have clicked the uh, close box up in the top and done the same thing, but I kinda like doing it with the command line sometimes. Okay, so now that we have that disk install, let's go back to Rufus and see what Rufus says. Take a look at that. Rufus recognized that we have a blank USB now and we are set to go. Okay, we do have to select our ISO image. So let's click select and we'll select that in the downloads folder. You'll have to navigate there maybe. 
and we'll select the Windows ISO that we had before. And we do want GPT, that you can select it, but we want GPT, GPT and we want the UEFI non-CSM. By the way, to get this off, you have to go to MBR and then you can choose uh, either one. But we're gonna do the GPT because we want the UEFI only disk um, or, or installer. And default is FAT32. I'm gonna be bold and I'm gonna choose NTFS. <laughs> You're like, oh no, you can't boot from NTFS. Uh, Rufus knows that. Rufus has a little trick up its sleeve. It installs a bootloader on a small FAT32 partition on the drive and called an EFI partition and that bootloader launches the NTFS uh, stuff, uh, the installer on the NTFS partition. The advantage to having the NTFS partition is that it allows uh, files greater than four, is it four megabytes? Four gigabytes, four gigabytes. Um, no, four megabytes. Okay, well anyway, individual file more than four megabytes uh, and you can't use FAT32, uh, but when you use NTFS, it'll work fine. And Windows occasionally, on some of their, inst uh, their installers, includes files that are more than four gigabytes in size. Now, I don't know why they do that. I think they just don't even notice and they just do it. But uh, you want NTFS here and trust me, it does work and I'm gonna show you that it actually does work. So we're going to start and I have a pretty fast system, so it, and a pretty fast USB drive. Uh, oh yeah, it'll destroy all that stuff. Uh, that's okay, you can destroy the drive. Okay, so I have a pretty fast system and this will take probably about three minutes. Uh, on a slower USB drive, it's gonna take longer or a slower system. And especially if you have, like I said, if you're using a USB 2 stick, it will literally take 10 times as long because uh, it's so much slower. So please use a USB 3 uh, drive for this. All right, I'll be right back. All right, we're all done. Now, you look at this little note here, it says that it's got the UEFI NTFS bootloader that's in the FAT32 partition, and you must disable secure boot. I'll show you how to do that. Don't worry, you can disable it for the installer and then re-enable it after Windows has been installed. So if you need that secure boot, um, you can re-enable it. Let's click close here and click close here. Now that we have our USB installer drive created with Rufus, let's check it because we'll need to know something about it. So I'm gonna go into disk management and that's this one right here, create and format partitions. And what we're looking for is where is, where is our drive? Um, this is our drive and you can see it is a GPT partition. If I choose properties and volumes, you can see it's a guide partition table. Um, but what we wanna see is um, the volumes that are on it, the D and the E. So, and they are in order on this one, I believe. Um, it is alphabetical order, but I think they are in order on this. Uh, the E is the second one, this D is the first one, and the E is the one we want. The UEFI NTFS bootloader is on that one. So when we boot up, we need to boot into the second, uh, second partition. I'm gonna show you next how to set up the BIOS to get a successful install with the UEFI stick that we just created. So let me switch to the BIOSes here. I'm gonna show you three different BIOSes and on the third one, we're actually gonna install it to show you how it works. The first BIOS I have for you is an MSI BIOS. On most BIOSes, you can hold down the delete key to enter the BIOS, but this will vary by computer, by motherboard manufacturer. So check out the manual or the documentation on your computer to see which key you have to press to get into the BIOS. Or UEFI is actually the more proper term for it. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the power button on that and I'm gonna hold down the delete key and hopefully it will boot into the BIOS and hopefully you'll be able to see the, the screen and everything. So let's see that. There we go, it did boot and we should see the screen for the BIOS in just a second, there we are. This is not my favorite BIOS setup, but it does work. So I'm in the more advanced one. By the way, there is an easy mode here. And if you're in easy mode, you can just click up here or you can hit the, the uh, key, the F7 key to go into the advanced mode. You do want the advanced mode for this. Click settings, you just hit enter. Now, generally in BIOS, you use the arrow keys to navigate 
and enter and escape. Enter will select the thing that you want and go another level deeper. Escape will back you out and go the other way. The arrow keys will navigate up and down. I'm using the arrow keys right there. So we want to go into settings and we want to look for the boot options. And we want the boot mode select, and I already have it here, UEFI. You can choose either UEFI or Legacy and UEFI on this one. You want UEFI only, okay? We want UEFI only boot. And then we need to, I'm gonna hit escape here and we'll go back to the previous menu. We need to disable the secure boot. Remember it said that on the Rufus thing. So I look in here, trusted computing, that's not what we're looking for. Chassis intrusion has nothing to do with it. Uh, hit escape and go back. By the way, you can navigate with the mouse on most of these more modern BIOSes, but I still find it easier to navigate with the arrows, the escape key and the enter key on the keyboard. Um, so it's not there. So where is it? Well, let's go into the advanced and let's look at Windows OS configuration. Um, honestly, you might have to check the manual on where these things are. Now, you don't see anything here, but if we enable this Windows support, um, oh, wait, I disabled it again. Let's enable it. Then you will see that it has a secure boot and the secure boot is disabled, but we don't want Windows 10 support on this computer enabled, so we will re-disable it and we will leave it like that. Uh, so that's it for this computer. Um, those are the settings that you need to do. Now to save, I'm gonna hit escape again, hit escape again, go back to this main menu here that we started with, and then choose save and exit. Um, and you can save changes and reboot or you can discard changes and exit. And because I'm using this computer for something else, um, we're just gonna discard changes and exit. And let's go to the next computer. The second computer I have for you isn't a full computer. It's actually just a motherboard processor and some memory sitting on the desktop here. And it doesn't even have a storage drive in it, but you don't need that to get into the BIOS. So I'm gonna hit the power button and hold down the delete key and let's get into the BIOS. Actually on this one, I wouldn't have to hold down the delete key because there's nothing there for it to boot into except for the, uh, <laughs> for the BIOS. And it actually says no bootable devices detected and that's okay, we'll just click okay. I am using the mouse here to click this. And we get into this Gigabyte BIOS. This is an older Gigabyte motherboard. Um, if you see system information, you can see it's a B85 motherboard um, up here. So it's an older motherboard. But anyway, let's go and find the same types of things that we found before. So we need to put it in UEFI only mode and disable secure boot if we can find it, if we have it. Now, uh, boot mode selection is UEFI only. In this case, they don't call it uh, they call it legacy and Uf, uh, UEFI and legacy, but we want UEFI only. So we already have it set up correctly on this system. Um, so that's the boot features. Uh, now, what about the uh, uh, secure boot? Does it even have secure, secure boot on this system? I don't think it does. Um, Super IO, let's see, power management. Well, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, so peripherals, and we got nothing here, and I think we don't, I'm using the arrow keys. We go down, we got nothing here, and go down, do we have anything more? Oh, we do. And, oh, there's secure boot, it's disabled. Now, honestly, I think you need to uh, do some other things like uh, maybe enable the Windows 8 features. I have it on other OS. By the way, other OS works great for Windows 10. As long as you're not on Windows 8, you can enable these. Maybe if we, let's try it. Let's see if we enable these if the, the secure boot thing is now enabled. Yeah, it is. Um, so then we can disable the secure boot. So if you have that Windows 8 features enabled, um, you can disable the secure boot, but I'm gonna choose other OS. And honestly, I think the install worked great with other OS. You can try it the other way too and disable secure boot. So that looks real similar to the previous one. Remember to save and exit here. And so we'll save and exit setup and click yes, and we'll go to the next computer. All right, let's get into this third computer. I'm going to hold down the delete key, it works on this one too, and press the power button, and we will boot into the BIOS for this particular computer. And then we're gonna install Windows, I'll show you that it does work, and we are gonna install the proper thing. Now, I am in the basic mode, again, it tells you how to get to advanced mode, you can click that, or you can press the F6 button, which is what I'm going to do. This is an ASRock Desk Mini, it's an H110 motherboard. 
I'm going to be building a new ASRock computer, uh, a desk mini computer, in my next video, so watch for that. Now, if I go over here to advanced, uh, let's see here, no, tool, we'll boot, that's what we want. Okay, so we want to do the uh, compatibility support module. It actually calls it the compatibility support module instead of legacy in this one. So we go in there and it makes sure it is disabled and it is disabled, so we are good. This is one of my favorite BIOSes, by the way. It, it's, it's well arranged. Okay, now how about secure boot? Where is secure boot? Um, fast boot, that doesn't do anything. Uh, let's go security. Do we got secure boot? We do, and there you can disable the secure boot under the security. So sometimes you have to hunt around for these things, but looks like we are all set. Now, um, because we're going to install, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to start from scratch. We're going to load the defaults, because this is how you're going to see it, and then we're going to go in and do those boot things again. So let's go CSM. You see, when you do the defaults, it enables everything because it wants to be the most compatible. It wants to give you the best chance for success on that. And then the tool, um, oh wait, we got to uh, security. There we go. Okay, secure boot is disabled still, so that's okay. All right, but when you do the, uh, when you initially get the computer, um, you will have uh, all those other things. So we will save changes and exit, and then we will boot to the installer. Now to boot to the installer, what you're going to do is you're going to put the USB stick in and you're going to hold down the key that boots for your system. In my case, uh, on this system, it's F11. I don't know if you saw that when it came up on the splash screen. It usually shows when it first uh, comes up on the screen. Sometimes it doesn't. You might have to do a little bit of research, but F11 works on this computer. Sometimes it's F9, sometimes it's F1 or 2 or F6. It can vary a lot. Let's do a little research. Uh, look in your manual if you have your manual, and it'll tell you how to boot to the boot menu from the BIOS. But in this computer, it's F11, so we're going to reboot and hit F11 with the USB key uh, put into the computer, and I'll show you how to install Windows. I'm holding down the F11 key. I do have the Windows installer that we created in the system. And there we go, we got our boot menu. Now, I forgot to mention when you go into the boot, you wanna decide which, uh, which uh, partition is the one that you need to boot to. One of these is an NTFS partition and one is a FAT32 partition that we can boot from. And I happen to know it's the second partition. Um, I, maybe I'll cut that into the video earlier and show you that. But anyway, let's boot from that, and it should boot into the Windows uh, startup. Now, the little artifacts you see on the screen currently, uh, that, that's from the recording device that I'm using to record this. It, you won't see those artifacts probably. Uh, so anyway, this is our Windows installer, so we'll click Next. because You can select whatever you want here, and click Install Now. By the way, did you notice you can also choose Repair Your Computer there? Um, we're not going to do that, but anyway, we're going to install now. Um, activate Windows, and I do have a Windows key. Let me put in the Windows key, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back after the product key is in, in place, and accept the license terms. And we don't want to upgrade. We're going to do a custom install, and since we're going to do a clean install on this computer, we're going to delete all the partitions. Um, so let's start with this fourth partition and delete that. Okay, let's go to the third partition and delete that. And let's go to the second partition and delete that. And go to the first partition and delete that. And now it's all on allocated space. Windows it will do the partitions the way it needs to do it to install in the system. So let's click Next. And this is going to take a while, so we'll skip ahead. All right, Windows is finishing up, and it's restarting, and it should restart into Windows. Let's take a look. Let's see if it does restart into the Windows operating system. And here we go. Good sign. We've got the little uh, balls twirling around there. And did we have a successful Windows install? Let's see. Starting services, getting devices ready, and... I edited it out about three minutes there while Windows was trying to get to this point. Uh, it might take a while. The first time you start a computer after install, it does take a while. And region, you select your region, click yes. 
keyboard layout, select your proper keyboard layout for your region or your country. Uh, we don't want to add a second keyboard in this case. I only use English in, in my thing. Now, uh, connect to a network, and we got some uh, Wi-Fi networks that we can connect to. And no, we do not want to connect to a network. We're just going to click I don't have internet because I don't have this connected to the internet at the moment. And I don't want to put in a Wi-Fi password right now. So let's just not connect that way. Continue with limited setup is what we're going to choose. And hopefully we'll get going here. All right, let's put in a name. You'd put your own name in here. By the way, I highly recommend getting a Microsoft account because if you get a Microsoft account, um, you can share things between your personal computers and it really works well. I'll put in a top secret password here. Um, oh, I have to hit numlock to do that. There we go. There we go. Okay. And confirm password. It's so top secret. Security questions. We got to do that. Uh, we'll just pick whichever security question. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Oh, that, that was the same as my password. I, I gave you my top secret password there. Um, I hope you... Uh, oh, just don't look at the screen. Okay, just don't look at my, my top secret password there. Um, anyway, this is just a test computer. It doesn't matter. Um, we're not using this for anything special and I'll probably erase it soon. Now, privacy settings. You can read all of this. I generally disable everything. And the reason is, if you want to enable these, you can do it in the operating system and you can do it in the operating system later at, and with more detail on what you can control. So I usually disable everything, but it's up to you. You can read all those things and do it. And then, uh, yeah, that's all good. Um, it says, uh, if you want timeline, um, uh, active history. Okay, do more with active history. I'm gonna click no right now. That's, if you have a Microsoft account, you do wanna do that. And I'm not gonna do Cortana. I'm not a big fan of Cortana. Um, so anyway, we have our install. We should get to the desktop shortly here. All right, so now that we're in Windows, um, let's prove to you that we are with the UEFI system. First, let's look at the disk management and that's in this one. And if you take a look at the disk here, this is our, our uh, install drive is this one. But let's look at this one and get the properties. And if we check volumes, you can see it's a guide partition table on our disk that indicates UEFI. And you can double check, you can do sysinfo. Oops, spelt that wrong. <laughs> there we go, system information is what it's called now. You go to system information, if I take a look at this, BIOS mode is UEFI, so we are in the UEFI system. I hope you enjoyed this home tech adventure, and I hope you learned a few things. Please watch some of these other videos, and as always, have fun on your own home tech adventure.